We are live, everybody. Mayor, you heard that we are live. Yes, thank you, Mr. Campbell. Okay, great. Well, we have about three minutes to go. I'll remind everybody that we are live. So be conscious of your uh, microphones and video. And here in a minute, we'll convene the meeting. Okay, just a couple of minutes to go. We'll let everybody know who is watching the live feed on YouTube that it's a long-standing tradition of Simpsonville City Council to have a invocation prior to the beginning of each meeting. I always ask for volunteers uh, from any faith to come forward and deliver such an invocation and would welcome anybody to uh, get in touch with me or our mayor pro tem, Je uh, Jennifer Poulihan, uh, that would be glad to have you record an invocation for our meeting or actually uh, join the meeting to deliver that invocation. We don't have anybody lined up to do that tonight. Are there any volunteers among those present who would like to give us an invocation? Seeing nobody wildly, violently waving their hands asking to do that, uh, I will deliver the invocation for the meeting. If you would, please bow your heads. Our Father in heaven, we thank thee for this opportunity to do the good work of the city of Simpsonville. Bless us in this endeavor and guide us in making good decisions for all the people of our city. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, Justin, if you want to go ahead and start the recording, we'll convene the meeting in about 15 seconds. It is 6.30, the uh, August 25th meeting of Simpsonville City Council Committee of the Whole is called to order. Administrator Gracely, will you call the roll, please? Sorry about that. I couldn't unmute. Councilmember Gooch has let us know that he is not going to be joining us this evening. Councilmember Kelly? Here. Councilmember Houlihan? Here. Councilmember Roche? Here. Councilmember Cummings? Here. Councilmember Hutchings? 
Here. Mayor Shoemaker. Here. Thank you, Administrator Gracely. It appears we have a quorum. First item of business is the minutes of the July 28th committee of the whole meeting. Uh, are there any corrections to minutes? Thank you. Hearing none, the minutes will uh, stand approved as submitted. Uh, the next item on the agenda is citizen comments. Uh, we have no uh, citizen comments that were submitted for this meeting. Remind the public that uh, we have uh, a couple of ways that you can uh, make a citizen comment. You can record a message using uh, any, any kind of recording that you can then email uh, to me at City Hall or to our Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, or you can call my number at City Hall and leave a message uh, on uh, my telephone at City Hall and we'll pick up that recording and play it as a citizen comment. We just ask that you uh, give us a little bit of time to make sure that it's available to play during the meeting. So if you could have it in by noon of the day of the City Council meeting, uh, we will be uh, glad to entertain your comments. You must have standing in the city. You must be either a resident or own a business within the city. Uh, to, to give a comment. So when you leave a message or message to be played, make sure you clearly state your name and your address or what your standing is in the city. All right, the next item is staff reports. We'll start with the monthly financial report from our Director of Finance, Christine Perino. Ms. Perino, will you begin, please? Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, you should have received July's financial report. Um, we're at the start of a new fiscal year already. Uh, the general fund revenues collected for July were just under $183,000 with expenses just over $1.3 million. Sewer fund revenues collected for July were $183,000 um, and expenses were a little over $38,000. For the hospitality and accommodations uh, revenues for July, it was a little over $8,000 with expenses um, just over $10,000. And our Public Works Enterprise Fund we collected for July was a little over $3,000 with no expense. Any questions or we'd be happy to answer any. Don't see anybody. Thank you, Director Frino. Uh, next up is our Community Relations Thank Specialist you. Report. Specialist Campbell, will you please deliver your report? And uh, at, at this time, do you need me to turn over uh, the, the screen to to uh, John? Miss Gracely, are we going to do that uh, later on another agenda agenda item? Okay, thank you. Yeah, let's okay. do that a little later. Sounds like a plan. So, uh, thank you, Mayor and Council. So, um, uh, artists were chosen to complete the murals on South Main Street, and we did receive. Uh, design proposals and you know, a later agenda item, Ms. Gracely and I will address that. We're really excited about what we have. The summer music series uh, and food truck rodeo has been a real success. Uh, according to Safi, uh, we had about 700 people show up last week. So each week we're getting better and better uh, attendances and we're receiving great feedback from people. Uh, when people walk into the entrance of the amphitheater, no, nothing but smiles. Thank you so much for doing this. So I think people really appreciate um, this outdoor entertainment that we can provide during this um, these difficult times. Uh, we're working on a couple of Halloween events, but those details are still in the works. So we can't announce anything yet. And I provided a copy of the summer uh, 2020 newsletter yesterday. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them or try. Any questions from Council? Council Member Hutt. Uh, yes, I, uh, regarding the uh, summer music series, what is the, uh, under the current guidelines, what is the capacity that we are allowed to have there for that, for those events? Ms. Grazley, if you would like to Half address that. 50%. So, Councilman Hutchings, um, yes, under the governor's latest executive order, it would be a 50% capacity. He's also ordered that 
um, no venues be over 250 without approval from the Department of Commerce. So what we've done is um, painted the circles on the lawn to maintain proper six foot social distancing. Um, we've made arrangements at that venue so that all of the um, requirements of the executive order can be followed. Um, you know, I'm not comfortable with having happy of that venue because I think it would be difficult to maintain social distancing with that. So, you know, at 700, which is our largest um, group yet, we're at, you know, under 10% capacity. Any other questions or comments for Mr. Campbell? All right. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Thank Next you. up is economic development uh, from our planning and economic development. Okay. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, the permit numbers I normally supply for you at this time, we did just transition to a new software system. So so uh, this month, we're not yet available, but I will go ahead and, and next month's report will have uh, the ones that should have been in this one. Uh, we are having quite a few site plans still go through the review process. So we're not really seeing a slowdown uh, in, in what we normally do here in the city as far as projects coming in. Uh, with the boards and commissions, the planning commission met this month and they approved the master site plan for... Morning Mist, Phase 5, Section 2. Uh, so this is something that's been in the works, and Phase 1, or Section 1, has been coming along quite nicely, um, and it's going to be a really nice part of that neighborhood when it's done. Board of Zoning, Meal, Zoning Appeals met uh, to approve two different uh, construction services within the Business General District. Both of those were approved with a 4-0 vote. And then uh, St. Francis received a variance to allow for an additional sign they normally would be able to have uh, for their project on Grandview and Harrison Bridge uh, because of the, uh, it, it's really kind of to guide people for agencies. It's more of a public service. It's not really an advertisement of the, of the hospital system. So they did receive that variant from the board with a 4-0 vote. An additional item. Uh, this is for information. Um, I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have about it. Um, it'll be on the agenda for next month's business meeting for a vote. But the Burdette Central at 102 Southeast Main have approached us to be able to have council by resolution approve that uh, the Burdette building was once used for textile activity. Um, I've gone through the National Register Historic Registration form and it does specify on there that there was a, a shirt making company, which does fall underneath the guidelines um, for the state credit. They're looking, because it was a textile mill uh, location, to be able to have council um, certify it as a, a mill site so they can reach out for the abandoned textile mill um, credits that the state income credit. So the impact of the city, there will be no negative uh, financial impact to us. Um, all that's needed so they can further themselves along in this process is that resolution. So that'll be coming before you again for a vote at the business meeting. If you have any questions, I'd be more than glad to answer them. Questions or comments from council? Seeing none, thank you, Director Knudsen. Thank you. The administrator report. Administrator Diana Gracely. Thank you, Mayor, members of Council. Um, you have my complete report that went out with the agenda. I'll just highlight a couple of items and then I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, to let you know, we are eligible to receive some reimbursements through the CARES Act for um, COVID related expenses. I have applied for two different reimbursements to Greenville County. Uh, for janitorial services or any um, additional items related to COVID, the hand sanitizer and those types of things. Um, the screens that we placed in the lobby to protect our um, staff up front who deal with the public directly. 
Um, those items have been reimbursed and we've remitted um, a second reimbursement. Also, we have submitted to the state of South Carolina under their CARES Act funding reimbursement for staff time lost as a result of COVID. We have had um, six positive um, tests on staff, which is not a bad number considering we have over 170 employees. Um, all have either recovered or are recovering nicely. We had one hospitalization out of those, but he's doing quite well and is back at work. Um, wanted to let you know that finally, just today, we finished the environmental review for um, the Arts Center project. Um, when you have federal funding involved in a project, it generally slows things down tremendously. Uh, and in this case, it certainly has. We had some issues with the State Archives and History folks on some items that they wanted that were more architecturally um, significant to the period in which the building was constructed. Of course, those things are much more expensive. So we had some negotiation with them and finally reached a compromise. Um, we anticipate now the posting going up. Um, it's called the finding of no significant impact. And that will be posted on Thursday. And then about three days from that day, we'll be clear to advertise for bid finally on that project. So I hope that means we'll be under construction at least by November. And I think with the six month period that we're anticipating and given all of the COVID restrictions, we'll be um, fine for kicking off um, our first season of community theater next fall, the end of summer and next fall. Um, wanted to make you aware too, on the agenda and I'll, I'll elaborate on that one get to that. We are going to be applying for, I'm working on an application to the Municipal Association. You all probably recall that they started a couple of years ago doing economic development grants and they allow their member cities to apply for up to $25,000 in grant money, mainly for planning um, expenses, planning, typically downtown master plans or any other kind of engineering or planning related expenses would be eligible under that. And initially I had thought about um, applying for money to help us get started with the engineering for the intersection of Curtis and Maine. Of course, you all won't be discussing the downtown master plan or elements of it until we retreat next March. Um, and then during a phone conversation earlier today with Councilman Hutchings, we were talking about the trail project and, and the trail group meeting. And it occurred to me that perhaps a better expenditure for those funds, if we're fortunate enough to be funded, would be to hire a survey crew and engineer to lay out phase two of the Swamp Rabbit Trail in Simpsonville, which would take us from Fairview Road out to Heritage Park. Um, so if, if council has no objection, and of course we'll get to this, um, you'll vote on the resolution next month at the business meeting. But what I'd like to do is proceed with an application for phase two engineering of, of the Swamp Rabbit Trail. And so there is a $25,000 maximum grant award, and we would be required to put in a 15% match, with, which would be $3,750. And that's what the resolution would be for you all to approve at the business meeting next month. Um, we did, uh, as you know, we've been working on um, revising and updating our use of force policy. I think we're referring to it, um, and Chief Hanshaw can chime in on this if he wishes, as a um, response to resistance policy. All of those have been updated and he is ready to put those into practice. And I think they have come up with some really good policies that are very thoughtful and timely. And um, as I said, if he wants to expand on that, we can allow him to do that. Or if you all have questions specifically about that. Um, as Mr. Campbell mentioned, our concert series is going really well. Um, I would anticipate an even bigger crowd this Thursday because we're going to go in the crowd and get a lot of um, followers from the region. So it's going really well. I think the food trucks are happy to be part of it. Um, the crowd has been very responsive to it and, and excited that we're doing something. And it does give a sense of normalcy to be able to do this. So we're fortunate to have the venue as large as CCMB Amphitheater where we could move the series out there and properly distance everyone. So it's a safe environment. 
and you know it allowed us to be able to do this series where a lot of municipalities have had to cancel theirs because they didn't have a venue that could accommodate uh, crowds safely. I'll answer any questions you might have. Any questions or comments? Uh, Council Member Houlihan. Yes, so I would like an overview from Chief Hanshaw on the changes that are part of the response to resistance policies. I looked in the police monthly report and I didn't see that included in there. So if he could do that, that'd be great. Okay, yeah, I apologize. I probably should have put that in there. I think we sent it in an email. Uh, Administrator Gracie may have a copy of that that she can forward to you guys. And to sum it up in short, we just wanted to make sure our policies were updated with the current state of affairs to be more clear and precise about when and what type of uh, force should be used in resistance when it occurs. Um, and as far as changing the title from use of force to resistance. Uh, so if you have something particularly you're looking to understand, I can go over it, uh, but it's really just simply making sure that we define things. We, we looked at other policies, other places, Wanted to update that so that it was clear about the final chokeholds and, and the use of those and not using them and uh, what's proper. And so, like, in that case, it could only be in a deadly force situation, uh, meaning that the officer's life or someone else's life would have to be at risk. But that gives you some clarification as to what we do. Administrator Graceley? I'd just like to say I can forward that out to everyone this evening so you have a copy of it. Um, Mr. Holmes did review that as well and had a couple of minor changes that were made. Um, so as soon as I get the, the absolute final version of that, um, which I think aside from just a couple of minor um, changes, we, we have it all completed, I will send that out to everyone and then perhaps next month or any time in the interim if you all have questions specifically for Chief Anshaw or for me, we'll be happy to entertain those. Councilmember Hutchings, did you raise your hand? Councilmember Hutchings, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. First of all, Mr. Gross, I'm very much in favor of proceeding with the uh, application process for the MASC grant and directing that toward the Swamp Rabbit Trail development. I think that would be a great use for that if we can get that. Secondly, I have a question regarding the Arts Center. Are we um, still Pretty much on schedule with the occupancy of that from the Milltown Players Group. I know they suspended their schedule at the at their Pelzer Theater this year completely for the rest of the season. I think uh, is that going to change anything in that regard? No, sir. Um, you know, initially we thought we would be under construction by about this month, and and we would maybe possibly be able to get them in there for the spring season which would begin in january obviously that's not going to happen for two reasons one we're late with getting the project out to bid so therefore late with construction and completing the project and then two with COVID, um i don't think they're going to be in a position to host events until things get back to somewhat normal um because the occupancy is going to be limited i think we're going to be living in these restrictions for several months so um what I'm hopeful will happen is that by the time the building is complete and ready for Milltown players to occupy and do a set schedule of performances, we'll be back to whatever this new normal is and, and they can start their season off, which would be a 21-22 season beginning in August. Thank you. Council Member Houlihan. Let's switch gears and go over to Public Works there. Um, <clears throat> so I noticed that the repair on Cheyenne Drive near Aspenwood Drive is now complete, correct? And all that's left now is to start the paving process, which we can expect to happen within the next two to three weeks. Is that accurate? That is accurate, yes. We were trying to hurry and get the repair made once we discovered that there were some issues with the subgrade. Um, so we got a contractor those repairs were made very quickly and we're ready for the paving contractor to come in now and as you know the paving contractor is part of a much larger contract throughout Greenville County 
that is um, managed by the County Transportation Committee and their um, engineers. So we were hurried so we could get out of the way and let them do all of the sense and build paving projects, which we would anticipate in two to three weeks starting on those, maybe sooner. Um, but with the rain, I doubt it. They're, they're probably not ahead of schedule given the weather pattern recently. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other council members? Comments or questions? I will take the floor and just make one comment. I just want to thank Chief Hanshaw for the work that he's done on these policies and, and uh, the leadership in our police department and as a whole in uh, having a police department that is trusted and a culture that, uh, that we can believe in as, as leaders of our city and that our citizens can, can trust in and know that they want to be treated well. So thank you and thank you to all your officers. All right. Uh, before we move, I guess we've uh, had all of our, our chance to talk to the other departments, so we'll move on to business. The first item of business is a resolution for local match for MASC Economic Development Grant. City Administrator Gracely, would you like to summarize? Yes, thank you, Mayor, members of the council. So this is for discussion. The actual resolution will be part of your packet for the business meeting next month, and we'll ask you to vote on that resolution, which would be a $3,750 match to a $25,000 grant. And as I mentioned in my administrator's report, initially I was thinking about applying for um, engineering drawings for the intersection of Curtis and Maine, uh, but now I think it may be a more prudent and better use of this grant to um, work, have someone come in, a survey crew, an engineer work on laying out phase two of the Swamp Rabbit Trail. Um, as you know, we're going to retreat in March, and the downtown master plan and all of the elements of that will be summarized um, for you by the consultants who work with us on that, and staff will have input, and you'll have a chance to ask questions and there'll be an opportunity for a lot of discussion on the downtown master plan. And I would anticipate Maine and Curtis being a priority project coming out of that. So we can address that with engineering and, and implementation once you all have retreated. So um, in retrospect, I think a better use of this potential grant, if we're fortunate enough to be awarded, would be phase two of the Swamp Rabbit Trail. Thank you. Motion in order. Do I have a motion to move this to the to the next business meeting? Councilmember Roche. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, Mayor, I move that council approve the resolution for the local match for MASC Economic Development Grant. Second. All right, I have a motion from Councilmember Roche with second by Councilmember Hutchings to approve the resolution for local match for MASC Economic Development Grant. Discussion? There being no discussion, Administrator Gracely, will you do a roll call vote for us, please? Yes, sir. Councilmember Kelly? Yes. Councilmember Houlihan? Yes. Councilmember Roche? Yes. Councilmember Cummings? Yes. Councilmember Hutchings? Yes. Mayor Shoemaker? Yes. Motion passes 6 0. Thank you. Oh. The next item on the agenda is the mural concepts for the South Main Street building. Administrator Gracely, will you summarize, please? Yes, thank you, Mayor and members of Council. As Mr. Campbell mentioned in his report, we are very excited to present to you um, a proposal for the first mural, which will be on the way Mr. Howard's building um, on the wall on the side there where um, Cycle House is. So as you all are aware, there has been a committee working very hard for the past couple of months. Mr. Campbell's worked very hard for the past couple of months to get through all of the um, 
submittals from various artists. We had over 20 artists submit or, or respond to our RFQ, um, and the committee worked through um, narrowing those artists down and interviewed several and came up with um, the artists that they wanted for this first mural. Um, she came back last week with her concept for the mural. Um, at this point, um, with regard to the second mural, um, I think the committee has some more work to do. So we're only asking council to approve one mural at this point. And as I mentioned, this would be the one for the alleyway. Um, I will mention, uh, before I turn it over to Mr. Mr. Campbell, to talk to you about the various elements in this mural, that um, during the discussion, they did talk with the artist about doing the entire wall as opposed to just a section of the wall. And that would require that she be in a lift and that she paint the entire wall. Um, so that added to the expense. We, we had um, thought it would be about a $5,000 expense to do each mural. What we're finding is it's going to be a little more costly to do the first one, and we can probably get the second one done for less than $5,000. So we're still looking at an overall budget of the same. But what we're asking uh, for you to do this evening is to vote on um, allowing the artist to proceed with her mural design for that um, alleyway facing wall of Mr. Howard's building and at a cost of $6,750 for her materials and her talents to do that. So I'll turn it over to Mr. Campbell and let him talk with you about her concept. Thank you, Ms. Gracely. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council. So if you look at the two differences between option one and option two. Option one, you'll see there are three vertical blue lines. Those represent the three wooden poles in the alleyway. So if you went with option one, you would just cover that portion of the wall. Uh, and if you look at option two, that would cover the entire wall. It would go above where the vertical, uh, where the um, wooden poles stop and it would go beyond all the way to the end. If I could turn your attention to the elements in each one. So the first one, you see a family. Uh, the idea behind that element is community. Uh, next, you see the in option two, the dog sort of has its hand out, like, um, you know, shaking its hand. That could be an area of human intera uh, of, of interaction, interactivity. Uh, that was a, a, a big um, factor that, uh, or element that council or that the committee wanted was to have that interactivity. And then next to the dog, you have the Mylar Simpsonville balloons. And that's another uh, place where interactivity could occur. You can imagine someone standing next to it, holding uh, the strings. Uh, it's about the height of a average middle schooler being able to hold it. But, you know, say you have like a, a, a toddler, the toddler could be reaching, you know, in like a funny uh, photo trying to trying to grab the um, balloons, or it could look like they're getting away. Uh, you have the train from the Heritage um, uh, rail line. Uh, you have the, a bicycle that is a nod to the Swamp Rabbit Trail. You have um, Simply Home. Uh, she took the script and uh, applied that to the word simply. You see our three diamonds there. We have the ice cream cone, which is a nod to the ice cream station. Uh, we thought it makes a lot of sense because of the, the, the place that the ice cream station holds in the city and how important it's been uh, to give a nod to that. Uh, you have the guitar. Uh, there's all kinds of music, as we've talked about tonight at the meeting happening in the city, whether it's at um, Hendrix you know, Pavilion when we're not in a pandemic or at the CCMB Amphitheater or, you know, other local businesses in downtown will have artists come out and play. Uh, I like the color palette. The committee liked the color palette. Uh, it um, has a range of colors. Um, there are colors that pop. And uh, I would, the, I think the committee really likes the idea of covering the entire uh, wall. It's sort of like, you know, go big or hope, go home, you know, do the whole wall uh, so it doesn't look incomplete. Uh, lastly, to bring your attention to the magnolia flowers, 
so th uh, that was something that came up in uh, the committee. Um, an element had been used uh, in the first design proposal of uh, in a nod to the cotton mill. An element was cotton, and both the committee and I uh, didn't think that that would be a good idea, so the idea of a magnolia flowers was thrown out because, um, you know, they're very pretty flower, I guess. And so what Miss Hennessy did was she made another place for um, interactivity there, sort of border a picture. Um, if you had any concerns about the flowers, you know, we could get her to go back and, and alter that, change that. Um, does anyone have any questions about the elements or how this came about? Before we move on to, to questions or discussion, a motion is in order. Councilmember Houlihan? Mayor, I'm going to move that council approve the concept for the downtown mural as presented for the artist to proceed with the design at a cost of $6,750. Second. Thank you. I have a motion from Councilmember Houlihan with a second from Councilmember Hutchings to approve mural concept about Main Street building for the $6,750 discussion. Council Member Hutchings? Let's figure out where my hand is. Um, I just want to say that uh, I served, served on that on this committee and uh, this this uh, really from the first time I got by this really struck everyone as, as perfect uh, example of what we wanted uh, we did make some uh, adjustments on that before our uh, at our last meeting which so I, I hadn't actually seen some of this until today but uh, uh, quicks did she did to that but one thing I'd like to say is that um, we we would uh, I would like to see the committee um, go go back now and 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 kind of fine-tune it a little bit more if, if necessary before we uh, we settle on the final proposal. There's a, uh, I like the interactivity. That was one thing that one of the uh, uh, main uh, focuses we had with this. And we've got three levels there with that second option. Uh, I'd just like to see uh, a, a way that we can possibly identify some sort of a little bit more in one of those areas. That's one, one concern I have with it. I love it. Um, I didn't know what to expect because I wasn't on the committee, so I had no idea this was just a big fun surprise today or Friday. Um, and I really like it. I'm I'm actually a little surprised that I like the color palette because it seems kind of wide ranging. But when you put it all together, it really does. It goes. And I think all of the different elements really say this is Simpsonville. This is home that people are going to want to get out there and take their photos in front of it, that it's going to be one of those placemaker sort of designs. Um, and I mean, as far as the length of the wall, doing the whole wall, I think that's a great idea. I like the flowers. I think they look really good and tie in there at the end. Um, so I'm in favor of it just the way that it looks. Thanks. Councilmember Roche. Um, I just wanted to say the one that um, Justin presented isn't exactly like the one we got in our council packets. Um, I only say that because there's just a few minor changes. We had asked you to, I think to me that I asked you to brighten up the ice cream cone, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see that or not. But she did hit it with some sprinkles that are, let me get this, there we go. Some sprinkles, which are the colors of the diamonds and the Simpsonville logo. So it does pop a little bit more, and I think she gave some more um, shadowing in the magnolias on in the one we had in our council packet. You've got kind of a light blue and then that deep gold cone in the middle of the flower. So that's a little bit of a change. Um, the magnolias, the reason so many of them, and that's like a whole section there, I didn't realize that that was framing for a picture or something. Thank you, Justin, for pointing that out. I was kind of wondering. Um, her original design didn't cover the whole wall, and so down in the bottom under the Simply Home, she just had a couple of cotton blossoms there. 
and we decided to take the cotton out and go with the magnolia, and I thought that would that was just where it was ending. So um, I think committee may want to go back and um, rethink the end there, but since it was kind of a last minute that we would approve the entire wall, um, you know, I don't know that we really gave Miss Hennessy time to, you know, digest exactly what we were looking for since we had more space to work with now. But um, I hear Miss Houlihan likes the magnolia, so I'm curious as to what the rest of council thinks if everyone could weigh in. I appreciate it. Thank you, Councilman Rote. Cool. All right, I'll take the floor. I, I actually uh, uh, like the, the whole wall concept very much. I didn't catch that the magnolias were, were another place for interaction, but when you point it out, I think that's a great idea. It uh, gives us two places, and then also with the going with the whole wall gives us a little more chance for interaction with the dog that was added at our request, at the committee's request. Uh, I think that this mural is, is uh, if you put it up there the way it is right this second, I think you've got something that people are really gonna like. Um, maybe some fine tuning is, is a good idea to think about, but uh, I think it is very, very close. Any other comments from council? All right, seeing none, oh, uh, yeah. Yes, Mayor. I would like to point out that there's nothing else like this. This is very original. Um, this is uh, from the imagination of, of Miss Hennessy, and based on her interactions with her, with us, email exchanges, um, answering phone calls, uh, asking for last minute changes. I expect that a, a working relationship between her and the city will be smooth. Uh, she wants exactly what what we want. She wants us to be happy and I look forward to uh, working with her. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Any other comments or questions from council? Seeing that there are not, Administrator Gracely, if you would please do a roll call vote. Thank you, Mayor. Councilmember Kelly? Yes. Councilmember Houlihan? Yes. Councilmember Roche? Yes. Councilmember Cummings? Yes. Councilmember Hutchings? Yes. And Mayor Shoemaker? Yes. Motion passes with a 6 0 vote. Thank you, Administrator Gracely. Is there a, di a directive to do tweaks to the mural? Excuse me, Mr. Campbell? Yeah, uh, sorry, Mayor. Is there a directive to? to make tweaks to the mural? Um, and Administrator Gracely? If I may suggest, Mayor, I think the best thing to do is if any council members um, or committee members for that matter have any suggested changes they'd like to make, perhaps they could email those to Mr. Campbell and he could share those with the artists and the committee can look at the final concept before it actually goes on the wall. I think council's action is complete today, but the committee certainly could, could based on recommendations from council too at this point, fine tune any changes. Thank you. All right, next up on the agenda is zoning appeals, three seats. Uh, Mr. Derby, would you please summarize for us? Uh, yes, sir, thank you. Mr. Mayor and Council, tonight we need to hold an election to fill some vacant seats on both Planning Commission and the Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, we've all been provided staff reports that include the applicants that are available. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if you mind, let me share the monitor. Give me one moment here. I can get my screen to respond. You have control. Thanks, sir. Come on. All right. As stated earlier, currently we have four vacant seats. The staff report um, referenced three. We had a last minute change to one of the applicants who was thinking to be ineligible, but is going to stay on the board. So now we only have two 
on board zoning appeals and two on planning commission. Um, we have received five applicants that have applied for these positions. Uh, one of them has been Mr. Rick Hammett. Mr. Hammett currently serves on our board of zoning appeals. Um, has served for several years. It's been a very valued asset to the board of zoning appeals and is very interested in transitioning over to the planning commission. Um, if Mr. Hammond is selected tonight, we will have to, we do have the option to fill his seat as well. Um, with that, we'll go ahead and get started with the first seat of planning commission. On your screen, you'll see the five available applicants. Um, the first seat is a three-year term that's set to expire on December 31st. And I would ask at this time that a council member will make a motion to select one of these applicants, followed by a second, then a call for a vote. Council member Houlihan. Mr. Mayor, I'm gonna move that council appoint Mr. Rick Hammett to the three-year term of the Simpsonville Planning Commission. Second. Second. Okay, I have a motion from Council Member Houlihan with a second from Council Member Roche. Did I get that correct? Yes. Okay. To uh, uh, appoint Mr. Rick Hammett to the Planning Commission for a three year term set to expire December 31st of 2022. Administrator Gracely, will you call for a, a, do a roll call vote, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councilmember Kelly? Yes. Councilmember Houlihan? Yes. Councilmember Roche? Yes. Councilmember Cummings? I noticed a moment ago, Mr. Mayor, it looked like Mr. Cummings had to step out of the meeting. Um, Councilmember Hutchings? Councilmember Hutchings? And Mayor Shoemaker. Yes. So that would be a 5 0 vote to appoint Mr. Hammett to the three year term on the Planning Commission. Thank you, Administrator Gracely. Mr. Derby. All right, Council Member, our next seat is the other vacant seat on Planning Commission. This is a two year term set to expire on December 31st, 2021. Council Member Hutchings. Yes, I would like to nominate uh, Alan Gillespie to serve a two-year term on the Planning Commission. Second. Second. Okay, I have a motion from Council Member Hutchings with the second from Council Member Kelly to appoint Mr. Alan Gillespie to the Planning Commission for a two-year term set to expire December 31st, 2021. Administrator Gracely, will you do a roll call mm -hmm. vote? Yes, Mayor. Thank you. Council Member Kelly? Yes. Councilmember Houlihan? Yes. Councilmember Roche? Yes. Councilmember Cummings? I think he's still out of the meeting. Councilmember Hutchings? Yes. And Mayor Shoemaker? Yes. Thank you, Mayor. That's a 5 0 vote to appoint Mr. Gillespie to the Planning Commission for a term ending December, 20, December 31st of 2021. Um, now we move over to our board zoning appeals. Mm -hmm. uh, we have two of these to fill for a one-year term. The first one here is a one-year term set to expire December 31st, 2020 for the board of zoning appeals. I make a motion that we appoint Isabel McFadden to the board of zoning appeals one-year term set to expire December 31st, 2020. Second. I have a motion from Council Member Kelly with a second from Council Member Hutchings to appoint Isabel McFadden to the Board of Zoning Appeals for a one year term set to expire December 1st, 2020. Administrator Gracely, uh, hold one moment. I'm sorry, I have uh, a point of order. Point of order. So, are there now that we voted on Rick Hammett to join the Planning Commission, does that vacate his seat on BOZA and therefore we're now filling three seats or are we still just filling two seats? Now, three seats on board zoning okay. appeals. Okay. Uh, 
so the motion has been made and seconded uh, to appoint Isabel McFadden to the Board of Zoning Appeals for a one-year term set to expire December 31st, 2020. Administrator Gracely, will you do a roll call vote, please? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Councilmember Kelly? Yes. Councilmember Houlihan? Yes. Councilmember Roche? Yes. Councilmember Cummings? Councilmember Hutchings? Yes. And Mayor Shoemaker? Yes. Thank you. That is a 5 0 vote to appoint Ms. McFadden to the Board of Zoning Appeals. All right, this is the second one year term for a Board of Zoning Appeals. One year to expire December 31st, 2020. Councilmember Hutchings? Yes, I'd like to make a motion to appoint Sherilyn Carpenter a one year term to expire on December 31st, 2020 to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Second. Second. A motion from Councilmember Hutchings to from Councilmember Houlihan to appoint Sherilyn Carpenter to the Board of Zoning Appeals for a one-year term set to expire December 31st, 2020. Administrator Gracely, will you conduct a roll call vote, please? Councilmember Kelly? Yes. Councilmember Houlihan? Yes. Councilmember Roche? Yes. Councilmember Cummings? Councilmember Hutchings? Yes. And Mayor Shoemaker? Yes. Okay. That is a 5-0 vote to appoint Ms. Carpenter to a seat on the Board of Zoning Appeals. Thank you. Mr. Derby, the last seat. The last vacant seat we had will be Mr. Hammett's seat being vacated. It is a three-year term set to expire December 31st, 2022. And the only applicant left is Mr. Howard Lentz. Mr. Mayor, I'm going to move that council appoint Mr. Howard Lentz to a three-year term on the Board of Zoning and Appeals set to expire December 31st, 2022. Second. I have a motion from Councilmember Houlihan with a second from Councilmember Hutchings to appoint Howard Lentz to the Board of Zoning Appeals for a three-year term set to expire December 31st, 2022. Administrator Gracely, conduct a roll call vote, please. Councilmember Kelly? Yes. Councilmember Houlihan? Yes. Councilmember Shea? Yes. Councilmember Hutchings? Yes. Mayor Shoemaker? Yes. That is a 5 0 vote to unanimously appoint Mr. Lentz to the three year term on the Board of Zoning Appeals. Thank you, Administrator Gracely. Mr. Mayor, that concludes the election. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Derby. That concludes all of the business on our agenda for this evening. If there are no objections, the Simpsonville City Council Committee of the Whole meeting will stand adjourned. Thank you. Good night, everyone.